Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You can see, we have uh, another project. Now, if you watched any of the other videos about the 2002 73 that I was redoing, which you can see here in the frame, uh, this is the truck that it's going into. So, I didn't do any of this work myself. Uh, him and his boy decided they wanted to do all this. They had the frame sandblasted, painted, uh, put the axles back in it. Uh, redid a bunch of stuff, you know, new steering linkage and sway bar end links and stuff like that. So, but he told me, he goes, hey, you know, we got this truck tore apart and I kind of talked him through tearing it apart and giving him some other tips and pointers and stuff like that. And I said, and he brought me the engine and we read, we went through and kind of refreshed a little bit. And he goes, hey, he goes, you got the engine. Uh, we'll bring you the frame. Can you put the engine and the transmission in it? Get the drivetrain all set up and uh, we'll bring you the cab back up and I'll set the cab on and get it running. I said, yeah, yeah, sure, we can do that. That's no problem. So we're gonna do a couple little installments on this truck here. Uh, when this one leaves here, it will not be whole, but it will be able to move under its own power. So brake lines, fuel lines, uh, you know, all the coolant, you know, the engine in it, all the dash in it and stuff like that. So that's what we're gonna be doing to this truck. Just wanna give you a small overview of uh, the beginning of this project. And uh, the guy's name is Mike, his son's name's Luke. So we're going to go ahead and do this for them. And uh, hopefully uh, get this wrapped up here pretty quick for them so they can get this truck back on the road. Um, you know, this truck has right around 100,000 miles on it. However, it's lived in Pennsylvania its whole life. It's uh, seen some better days. So we'll go over this and you can see the frame isn't perfectly smooth. But hey, it's black. It's nice. It's not rusty anymore. So... Uh, it'll run good, should last a long time. So let's get into checking this out. We had done some videos on this engine here. You can see the turbos back on and we have uh, new up pipes and everything like that. We covered all this in another video. However, the update for this engine would be that we have the wiring harness installed, uh, the relays are installed here, and we got everything routed the way it's supposed to be. Uh, turbos all completely rebuilt here and put back on. So we went ahead and uh, we have this frame here now. He opted to reuse the original front bushings. He said they were still in pretty good shape. That's what he wanted it to do. I tried to talk him into a set of S and B's. He wasn't having it. So he has a whole body mount kit that we'll be putting new mounts on. You can see this frame's got some, you know, texture to it, which is fine. Uh, it's got a couple places that were a little bit rough, but not too, too bad. New e-brake cables, new sway bar end links, new brake lines. These brake lines came from inline tube. I do believe they are stainless. And he said that they were pretty happy with how they fit. They look to be pretty good. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and finish tidying up the brake lines as well. New hangers and shackles in the rear. Uh, new hangers up here in the front. Still using the old uh, filler hoses here, but it looks like that's got a new filler neck that they put on. We went ahead, pulled the fuel pump out, made sure that the foot on it was good. We have to run new vents for the fuel tanks here. You can see that the hose is dry rotted off. That's no big surprise. Drive shafts all painted up, installed. We're gonna have to do some probably more stuff with this. I do know that it has new four wheel drive lockouts that we're gonna be putting in. I do know it needs one wheel bearing, so we'll be changing that as well. All new steering linkage up front, new track bar itself here. It's not installed yet. We need to get a little bit of weight inside the uh, cradle here to get the track bar to line up a little bit better. We do have some new brake rotors coming for the front of this as well. Uh, brakes are not installed in the front as you can see. So we will be doing all of that as well. But main goal here is we're gonna be setting this engine inside this frame today. <clears throat> but we have, uh, you know, all the fuel lines are ran here. Did not replace the fuel pump. These uh, factory 7.3 fuel pumps are notoriously resilient. You know, they, they last a long, long time. And while that one looks a little worse for wear, still works and uh, works well. So we were gonna keep that on there unless it needs to be replaced because I do believe if you buy it from Ford, it's $330, but I think you can buy a Bosch replacement 
for around a hundred. So the Bosch replacement is literally just the pump inside. But all those lines are ran. They did that themselves. The fuel tanks installed. Uh, always make sure you put your little bumpers back on for the bed. We had them laying around, so we get them installed. And you know, new shocks front and rear. But little TD, little uh, stuff that we got to do to this, and we'll get it all put back together here for them so that they can get this truck running and uh, all assembled. But first order of business here is going to be getting this engine dropped into this frame. So that's our goal for the day. We want to get this engine set in and uh, we're going to go ahead after that and do the rear main. Uh, it's a lot easier to do a rear main in the frame with no transmission. You can just kind of like sit there and get it done. Whereas on the stand here, you can't really get to the main and the rear because there's a stand in the way. So we're going to go ahead and get this all hooked up and get it set down in the frame. All right, so we have our stand here, we have our hoist here, and we're going to go ahead and get this hooked up. Usually, I do this the other way around, where the front of the engine is facing inside the stand. However, it's a lot easier to do the stands the way that they're set up, because they're both uh, a V at the bottom, so they nestle together pretty nicely. Ideally, I would love to have a swivel at the top of this hoist, but I don't have a swivel. So we're going to have to do a little bit of a spin on this. And uh, as we pick it up, it'll kind of just spin around the way I want it to be. But this load leveler makes this really nice um, for picking stuff up. You can get a little bit of slack out of the chains. But we're going to go ahead and get this picked up. So you can see it nestles in there really, really nice and gets it right where we need it to be, but we're gonna go have to spin this around. Always make sure when you're hooking up that your uh, hook is gonna pull into the throat of the hook and not on the latch. Go ahead and get some tension. I always pick this up until that it will uh, float just off the ground. That way when you take the stand off, it doesn't fall forward on you. So this is another reason that I don't like to do this this way. So now the stand is in the way. which it's simple enough to go higher. I just don't want to if I don't have to. So we have the engine all supported here and we're gonna go ahead and get this baby in the frame. Now, when you're putting the uh, engine in the frame here, make sure that you have your ratchet strap because you don't want to rely on the engine mounts to hold all of the weight. Now, they will support it, but you, it can rock and uh, can tear the mounts. So we'll let this down nice and easy a little bit, get it a little closer.
All right. Now, as we go down, that also takes and pushes the engine out a little bit more. Now, I'm going to come over here and make sure that you're getting a good view of this. So, one second. All right. Now you can see that we have this hanging here and get a good view. You can see that there's two sets of holes here um, on the six liter frames. You have two sets of holes on both sides on the seven, three frames. You have uh, one set of four over here. So two sets of two and you have one set of three on the other side. So you want to make sure that when you're dropping this down in that it actually sits in the correct holes because you can put it in the wrong holes. So on this, uh, this cradle here, you're going to want to be in the front two holes. So we'll go ahead and get this thing set down in. All right, we got it pretty close there. Uh, we do have the oil filter on, so we want to be mindful of the oil filter. We'll just go down nice and easy. So you can see we got to pull it forward a little bit here. Generally, you'll get one side or the other at a time. So this, uh, the way that this is leaning, looks like we're going to get our driver's side first. Now, it doesn't want to drop in real nice. So luckily we have the load leveler on there. We can go ahead and uh, adjust the way this engine's sitting on here. So that little bit of an adjustment made a big difference here. And that'll drop down in over here then, which is great. So the engine is uh, sat down in here. As you can see, motor mount is attached. Uh, most of the weight is still hanging here. So we're going to go ahead and put our ratchet strap on our tow hook over here. That way we can pull the engine forward. So I'll get you another shot of this so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So we've got a ratchet strap here. This is just a little cheapy ratchet strap that I have for stupid stuff like this. And uh, this hose is just kind of hanging out here. Go ahead, hook it on your lifting eye up here, and then run down to the frame somewhere down here. And all this ratchet strap needs to do is it needs to just hold that engine from rocking back and forth on the motor mounts and tearing them. We can go ahead and lower this down now. Okay, so we have uh, pretty much all the weight on here. Need to give this a little bit, a couple more cranks here. And we'll come down a little bit farther.
So we have all the weight sitting on the cradle there, and that actually helped with the drag link alignment. And you can see there's a little bit of suspension here, but you can see how this engine will wiggle in here. So the idea here is this ratchet strap is basically keeping those engine mounts from tearing because the engine mounts are uh, forward on the block. You know, if they were centered in the block where it could be balanced, it would be okay. However, the back of the engine is supported by the transmission, so we uh, won't be uh, tearing those mounts if we have this strap here. And if you're not confident with just one, you can put another one on the other side and it'll hold this engine because all this is doing is just keeping it from falling back. It's not actually holding too much weight. You know, you can actually grab and move this by hand just like so. It's not too, too heavy. Um, but do use a halfway decent quality strap for this because if you don't, uh, you risk it tearing or shredding or anything like that. And then if your engine falls, well, then you have other issues, especially since we'll be working on the back of this to do a rear main. So we'll go ahead and get this all unhooked for you here. We'll be using the uh, engine hoist to put the transmission in later when it arrives. It should be here in a couple days, hopefully. Um, it's waiting to be rebuilt at a local shop. So once we uh, get that transmission, we'll use the hoist again to put that transmission in. I'll uh, be able to level it with the load leveler, which is great because it wants to be, you know, whichever way it needs to be. However, so this is the install of the uh, engine on this truck. This is also your introduction to the uh, 2002 Super Duty that we're going to be putting together for Mike and his son. So hopefully you guys can... Uh, get a little more information out of this video. Like I said, we had put a 7.3 in another frame. However, that was a six liter frame. So it's a little bit different than putting uh, an engine in where it's supposed to be versus an engine where, you know, it's not really supposed to be. Uh, but however, you know, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate all of the support that you've given me throughout the, uh, the time that I've been here. Um, and we'll try to keep making videos for you guys. Hopefully try to get some more trucks put back on the road. So thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you on the next one.